having me. All right, have a seat. Sure. Uh, Hello there, welcome to MNB World Talk Show's brand new episode. Well, today we have invited a very beautiful lady, social influencer and actress, Miss Sansarma Batter. Hey. Hey, hi. Good. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. How are you? Thank you for receiving our invitation to grace us with your presence. <laughs> My pleasure is all mine. All right. So to talk about you, we have to start from the very beginning. Let's talk about your childhood. What kind of child you were and if you would share the best memories of your childhood. Well, every time I hear childhood, mm -hmm. one word pops up in my brain, okay. which is dance. Dance? Yeah, I used okay. to dance, uh -huh. like, since, I don't know, since I, like, you know, since I remember things. Mm -hmm. And dancing was the biggest part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. So what kind of dance you would dance? Like, well, like... Is it, is it like ballroom dancing or just hip-hop dancing, break dancing? I pretty much covered everything. Oh. <laughs> but like, not like as professionally though, but mm -hmm. um, it, it has started as, you know, going to some dance class, mm -hmm. ballet, mm -hmm. and I was trained in traditional dance. Mm. And that was pretty much my, my base. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like when you grow up, like, you know, all the cool kids are doing a street dance uh -huh. and hip hop, like rap and, and all that. You got into it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like I've got my, I've got myself a band, okay, like, you know, okay. dancing band. Okay, what so was like, the name? It was a uh, science. Science. <laughs> it was so funny. Like uh -huh. when I just think back, that's, that's like really funny name. But yeah, that science. was us. Yeah. What does it mean? It's the, it's the combination of a bunch of words combination of bunch, bunch of, of words. words yeah okay. but like it's gonna be really hard to like translate it to in english um okay so the mongolian yep. words the yeah it's like a bunch of mongolian words. bunch of yeah. mongolian words combined together mm -hmm. okay let me just try to like even think about it seance yeah well any, anyways anyway. so uh if you can share the dearest to your heart memory from your childhood the first thing in your mind dearest well, there are so many dear memories, you know. The first like, thing pop in your mind. Maybe, you know, there's like a lot of memories with my family, with my sisters, with my friends in mm -hmm. school, you know, but it's just hard to pick one. But this memory never goes away. Okay, we okay, have, now let's hear. We have this tradition. We had this tradition mm -hmm. in our family. And every Friday we would visit our grandmother's house, mm -hmm. and she she you know she would cook some like she would cook boats, mm -hmm. you know, and like you know there's like a dishes like she would always prepare. Mm -hmm. And then every Saturday morning we would visit her again, mm -hmm. and then she makes this beautiful tea with rice, you know, like traditional mm -hmm. rice milk tea, tea with milk rice. tea, oh. yeah, and then. I think that was like the one, one of the coolest thing, you know, because this little tradition brought everyone together as a mm -hmm. family. So mm -hmm. like we would really bond mm -hmm. and have a really quality time as a family. And then I really, really want to like continue this, carry on this tradition with our, with my family. I hope for, with, like, you know, with, hope with, with your family in the future. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I miss it. I miss you it miss so much. You miss that closeness. I you do. miss that family gathering. I miss like, you know, sitting with my family, having a dinner or like even a breakfast together. Well, I these are that. precious moments of our yeah. lives. <laughs> well, uh, you studied as a journalist in Mongolia. Yes. You did your bachelor in journalism. Then you worked in here at Mongolian National Broadcaster. Then after that, you studied acting yep. in the College Theatre Academy in Los Angeles. Yes. Why acting? What, do you, what did you love about acting? It's very funny, you know, Okay. because <laughs> all this idea of becoming an actor, like 
this idea came to me here while I was here in this very building. In this very building. This okay. studio used to be uh -huh. um, MM agency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't I wasn't part of it. But like uh -huh. I was working as a host mm -hmm. and editor, mm -hmm. but mostly a host because mm -hmm. I was very young. Mm -hmm. And eight, nine years ago? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Uh -huh. Um and then I was I was doing so poor job. My hosting was not the greatest. Okay, you know? okay. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like uh, this is the one of the biggest television in Mongolia, and like all the best super people work here. And then I was like young and inexperienced. Mm -hmm. This girl, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to like make it in uh -huh. the TV industry. And I knew I was doing a poor job. Okay. <laughs> and the elders would scold you often. No, actually, like uh, they no? spoiled me a lot. They spoiled you a lot. Wow, that's a surprise know. in today's world. <laughs> they were okay. so nice to me. They okay. were like always like treated me as if as if if I were you know their daughter, mm. and I'm really appreciated it. <laughs> okay. And um, and then I had some um, opportunity to work as a host on the stage. That was a that was like a oh my god that was that moment. Mm -hmm changed my life uh -huh. because I did such a bad job oh, you and then a I had job. a uh -huh. like stage fright mm -hmm. like oh my god every Saturday mm -hmm. I could I could not sleep the night before because, because I was afraid like oh my god I'm gonna be on stage like uh -huh. I'm gonna be really bad at it I could not project my voice mm -hmm. and then uh, the decision was actually made to go abroad, you know, to have a better education, but it was always like journalism, a master degree or whatever. But like that whole experience changed me and I'm just, I was like, okay, Sansa, you need something mm -hmm. that you could use, improve your career. Mm -hmm. So what could it be? And I did a lot of research and I don't know how it crossed it into my desktop or whatever, but I just, I was just reading about this acting school classes mm -hmm. and it was so exciting. They had movement class, you know, like I used to dance. So like, mm -hmm. I always have like a really sweet spot for like movement and dance mm -hmm. and stuff. And they had voice class. Mm -hmm. That was a trigger. And I was like, okay, if I train my voice, I could project my voice better so I could have a better career. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the decision so, I so, made so, based uh -huh. on my like, necessity or like mm -hmm. something like that but as a tradition we show some resume and photos yep. who you are on papers so um, I'm sure we have lots of beautiful pictures ready to present to all our audience so let's take a look who is Miss Sansarma on papers So glamorous photos. Thank you. And uh, I like the fact that your face looks different in different situations. I mean, it, because of the different makeup. But yeah. some people, some too pretty people, they don't change. Like they're just the same. <laughs> for example, are you Kira trying to say I'm not too pretty? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> for example, Kira Knightley, two mm. specific face details, maybe yeah. whatever. So. I like the fact that your face changed. Thank you very much. Well, anyhow, as an actress, you uh, worked on roles through your colleges, maybe after your college. So what was the most challenging role that took the most out of you? I never thought I was very introvert. I always mm -hmm. like thought myself as an extrovert because mm -hmm. I was a one hell of an extrovert child, you know? Mm -hmm. But like when it's come to like, when it's uh, when it comes down to like acting, I had to be really real, mm -hmm. and then it was very. I was very surprised that I had a lot of layers of masks, and I had to like face them, face them, and deal with them, mm -hmm. whatever it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that. I think it's also based on my culture too. 
Like mm -hmm. in, in my culture, I was taught to like, never show your weaknesses. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be fine. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so like I have hauled a lot of emotions throughout mm -hmm. my, you know, life. And then I was just someone who pretends I was okay when I was not. Okay. You know, these kind of things leads to something. And then that was like the hardest thing because I didn't want to admit it, but it was the truth. So mm -hmm. it's, it's harder to deal with things mm -hmm. later on than that if, if, I, if I dealt it when it was the time, it would, it would have been like easier, you know, I cried, I screamed or whatever, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. like when you go back in time, like feel the pain, that's way more painful. You are big on Instagram, social <laughs> media in Mongolia, I mean, uh, we know it. So there are some debates about social media. Mm -hmm. Some people say putting too, ma too many pictures, too, ma too much attachment with social media is, 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 is bad because revealing too much, you know? Yeah. And some people say, okay, you're taking photos all the time. You are not really interacting with real life, etc. Mm -hmm. So how do you see social media platform, Instagram, Facebook, etc., Twitter? Mm. I only use Instagram. Okay. And I just think that it really depends on, you know, individual's perspective. I see it as, mm -hmm. um, obviously there's like a lot of negative side of social media. Everybody knows it, you know, it's mm -hmm. very addictive. Mm -hmm. It's uh, harming your self image and self worth and self confidence and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't see it as that way. Okay. I try not to see it. And I see it as an opportunity, ah. <laughs> abundance. And mm -hmm. it's Instagram is also very great. I really like it because mm -hmm. there's no status, there's no share, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just that's very negative, yourself, and right? everybody's expressing their profile, their world through pictures and mm -hmm. you know little captions sometimes, mm -hmm. and their story. It's very artistic, and mm -hmm. you can be very creative on mm -hmm. that platform. So, yeah, like. I try to stay positive, but I definitely know there's uh, some harm in social media. Mm -hmm. But I actually like for the fact that they removed the numbers of likes. Ah, yes, recently, yeah, right? Recently. they did. Mm -hmm. And it's also like helping a lot of people, you know. Uh, it's helping not to compare yourself with other people because yes, it's exactly. just numbers. If there's no competition in, yeah. in expressions, right? We yeah. are all different. and wow. yeah, so embrace you, it. You see social media as an Opportunity. opportunity, yeah. That is a great answer. I love it. <laughs> so you're an actress, social influencer. <laughs> On top of that, you are into fashion design now. Because yes. we know for a fact that you are working as a fashion designer with Evel Brand. Yes, Tell us is. about fashion design. For a matter of fact, mm -hmm. this very suit is my design. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I mean, you know, like in Mongolia, it's very hard to make a living with just acting or modeling, mm -hmm. you know. You don't have consistent income. Yes. And you have to, you know, you have to, like, find ways to support yourself. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm just, like, digging all the, all the industries that I could fit in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fashion design, fashion and clothing has always been part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I should have mentioned that uh, when you were asked about my childhood, Mm -hmm. I got a lot of trouble with my mom because of how I dressed because it was uh -huh. so eccentric uh -huh. and my mom got mad like, okay, uh -huh. don't dress like this. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you know, uh -huh. uh, people would see you. Yeah. You're getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And he was, she was very concerned about my safety and all that. Mm -hmm. And I would say like, this is who I am. Like, uh -huh. that's how uh -huh. I want to express myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, so it has been always a big part of my life and it was a great to make it into a real work. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I want to do more work on it, you know. Well, uh, as you know, we've uh, prepared a short video about her working in fashion designing. So let's take this pro uh, let's take a look at this process. My first collaboration with Develop Brand was inspired by Mongolian traditional costumes a lot because that's what's the brand's whole goal. They wanted to bring 
modern and daily basis clothing and our traditional clo uh, clothing together. So like something we could create for everybody to wear everyday life. Because, you know, like even though our traditional costume is very beautiful, it's not practical to wear it every single day. So like that was my first goal. For this project, it's gonna be just regular clothing, but it's gonna be all my style. There's not gonna be a limit, so like all, all the designs is gonna be like, it's pretty much based on my style. And for my fashion sense and for my style, it always changes. It never stays the same. I don't really, I don't really follow trends that much, but sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. But you, you know, like clothing gives you a lot of confidence. It helps you to express who you are. So I think it's a great opportunity for me to like create something that only for my, not only for myself, but for people. And also I don't have a proper education for fashion design as well. <laughs> and, um, but it, it has been such a big uh, part of my life and I've been really passionate ever since I was a child. So I pretty much like design all my, all my designs and outfit and ideas based on my feelings. One day I would love to be, you know, there to, to really get and participate in that process. I mean, yeah. it's very interesting. But quite surprisingly, it is not easy as it looks. Well, everything is not easy. I mean, if, if it's but easy, it's But it's surprisingly really hard. And then mm -hmm. so, like, I really want to give, like, a shout out to all the Mongolian brands mm -hmm. who are trying to make it out there. So who try to make, you know, clothes for Mongolian consumers and it mm. is, I just feel like it's, you know, a lot of people does not give enough credit for it. The designs and clothing coming out from the, these, these brands, starting new startup brands yeah. are really good actually, they really, really, really good. really good. And they are exportable, so I guess there's so much potential in there. Well, let's get back to you now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's get back to you now. You're not married. No, I'm not. <laughs> Single? No. Are you dating? Well, let's talk about Why love. is everybody so interested in my personal life? Of course, <laughs> people are interested because you have this so much influence on social media. Oh my God, it's not that even big though. Huh? Okay, but I, I appreciated it. Mm, mm -hmm. I have a boyfriend. I'm in a relationship, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so guys, uh, I'm sorry <laughs> to give you this uh, news. It's uh, quite sad news for our, uh, some of our male viewers, I guess. <laughs> it's well, all right. anyhow, anyhow, let's talk about, well, uh, I've got my answer. Mm -hmm. You have a boyfriend, you're in a relationship. I want to ask about your first love. Can you tell us, share some first love story? How old were you? I was very young. Around what age? Like 12. 12, okay. Yeah. Oh, and puppy love. <laughs> yeah, like 12, 13, uh -huh. I would say. And it's kind of a sad story. No, I don't want every, to talk about most it. Most of the first love stories are sad. Because like this is where I got my heart broken for okay, the first time. Okay, let's talk time. about and it. Was a let's tough, talk about that. It was tough. <laughs> um... I would, I would rather not to talk about it. You know, like, it's a first love. Like, but my that's heart cute. broke. Come on. It was, it was not cute. Huh? It was not even cute. Now that I think back, 12 years like, old, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. Falling in love and being heartbroken, it, 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 it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so who was, was the guy? It wasn't cute for me. <laughs> who was the who, not, not guy. It was a boy, little boy. Yeah, a little boy. boy. And uh -huh. <laughs> was it your classmate? <laughs> no. No. He was like, he was like a other dancer. Ah, in, in, in <laughs> I used to dancing. dance, yeah. Uh -huh. In ballet or in... in no, like hip-hop dancing. Oh, hip-hop dancing. He was like dancing. the one of the cool kids, whatever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so how did you guys break up? He dumped me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's, he's watching us now, so <laughs> he's regretting, shoot, I shouldn't have dumped her. Yeah, but that it, was I mean, it. it's life, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, like, I've learned so much mm -hmm. out of that experience, but it took a little while to get out of it. But I'm just finally happy with, you know, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that I'm happy with. And okay. because I was not really happy with them either, you know. Uh, but come on, we are talking about 12 years old. I know, but love. it's still like, but it, it has started at 12, but it has continued until like, you know, some later on. It has continued for a pretty long time, but uh, like. Ah, yeah. that was, yeah. that's why. Okay. Yeah. I got, but now you're okay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, if, if, uh, if it just happened and like, okay, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give him like satisfaction, you know, just watching this, like smiling. <laughs> 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 okay, never mind. My next question is about the most challenging times in life and how you overcame it and what you learned from those moments, those hardships, because these are the facts that make us human beings, yeah. right? We all have our problems and, you know, happy times. Yeah. The challenging time is, it's hard. I mean, life is hard, you know, it's always, it's, it's always about challenges. Mm -hmm. One challenge is another challenge. Mm -hmm. But the hardest one is... If you look back now. My dad died mm -hmm. now like six years ago. Okay. And I was in States and everything happened all of a sudden. So mm -hmm. it was like, very overwhelming and mm -hmm. I didn't know what really happened but like when I <clears throat> when I fly to Mongolia and he was gone mm -hmm. no last words no last kiss or anything like that but what did Sorry. you learn from your father the biggest lesson that your father mm. taught you what was it what is it that you carry on in your heart he was a big hater of liars, <laughs> so uh -huh. like every time I lie, and if he, you know, catches uh -huh. if I lie, and he would never believe in me later, uh -huh. and he would always say, "Like you lied to me, why would I believe in you?" And mm -hmm. then that was like the greatest lesson because if you broke, if you break somebody's trust, it's very hard to like earn it back mm -hmm. because of like stupid little lies or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then he taught me to be like how to be responsible for my own actions and not to lie and just be truthful and face the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I carry on every day on my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. So I you mean, hate liars and yeah. you are a quite honest yeah. person. And then after he died, it was it was very hard. It was very surreal and I actually couldn't accept the fact, the fact for a very long time, to be honest, up until like I moved back to Mongolia. Like sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like I deceived myself, like if he was alive or something like that. And it was very tough times, but I mean, life goes. I on. understood that, mm -hmm. you know, you have to let things go. Mm -hmm. You have to let it go and move on with your life, you know, mm -hmm. and He's, he's with me in my heart, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These passed aways, they, they are always with us. Yeah. Within our vein, within our DNA, within our hearts. They, yeah. I mean... A lot of people take a lot of things for granted, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like, my dad was gone just all of a sudden, like, out of nowhere, you mm -hmm. know. And then no last words. Everybody pictures something tragic events like that as a fancy way like movies you know like there's a bill or like there's like some sort of like exciting meeting but no but sometimes life is cruel <laughs> it it takes something you really appreciate all of a sudden so don't take anything for granted life is That's not movie you know. okay. yeah good well, thank you very much for sharing this uh, you this uh, very sensitive yeah. memory with us for being open with it. Hi guys, it's me again. Now I'm at my work. <laughs> uh, uh, we're about to do a shooting for Note Cosmetics uh, for New Year's. So Happy New Year everybody. Um, I've been doing modeling for three years 
and I was never trained. I didn't go any like modeling agency or anything. I was looking for a job as an acting in LA and instead I was offered a modeling job and I thought that was really cool. And but definitely acting helps a lot because even, even both in acting and modeling, you have to be in the moment, in the present. So like your eye tells you some sort of like story and then you have to be in character, you know, whatever your campaign is, whatever you're trying to show, it has, it has a lot of like similarities. So I guess um, even without like, a, you know, proper training, I try my best to like pull it off. And definitely I am growing every single day with it. And now that I'm doing it as a job, so like, you know, uh, from the shoot to the next shoot, I can see like, it's getting better and better. Like how I like show my face and how I like pose my body. Like I'm definitely learning a lot. And I do a lot of also like personal, like, you know, little self research to grow myself to be a better model like any kind of art form is it's a team job so like I'd really really like to say thank you for all my teams putting all this look together now I'm gonna go get changed and get my lipstick done and let's go to the studio and get this done Wow this beauty shooting takes a lot of work it does mm -hmm. But without a team, great team, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be that pretty, you know? And it's any art form is always a teamwork. Teamwork. So, it's not all then, about only the actors yeah. or the model, right? Yeah, actors and models mm -hmm. are privileged to have the, you know, just be in the front line, take all the credit. So, like, I really want to, like, give a big shout out to my team. Thank wow. you. Nice of you. My last question is about, again, future. What kind of, it's a traditional question. Mm -hmm. What kind of future do you want for Mongolia? But give us some detailed visual image. Do, do you want me to be honest, like brutally honest? Okay. Be honest. Okay. But um, tell us what kind of future you want for Mongolia. Obviously, obviously, like um, all the wishes that I have for Mongolian future has to do with the development, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But... The simple thing I could, I, I really wish for Mongolian mm -hmm. future, please, mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. please be nice and kind to one another. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going through something, you know. Sometimes consider that person is going through something as much as you do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people doesn't share or a lot of people doesn't show. Mm -hmm. So honestly, please be nice to each other. Sometimes I feel like this city has sunken into a gossip and... Don't judge and mm -hmm. let them be and let's all be happy. And I think life would be much more simpler and much more brighter if mm -hmm. everybody stopped judge mm -hmm. and, you know, push their perspective mm -hmm. onto people mm -hmm. and respect each other on daily basis, regardless of age and gender, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really wish for, you know, because I want to leave and... Friendly environment. Friendly, and, kind yeah, environment. I want to be feel loved every day. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> it might as be an say simple, but like I can't really think about big like strategy for the country, you know. But like that's all I want for that's my good. country. I mean, I mean, no, there's nothing. It's I mean, simplest things are the most important things. I would say so. I mean kind and friendly society yeah. from Mongolia. That would Lombardy. be really nice. Mm, that's <laughs> good. Fair enough. Well, thank you very much for right. sharing your life and experience with us, with our audience. And I wish you good health and good luck. Thank you very much. Bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been actress, social influencer, fashion designer, Miss Sansarma <laughs> Batur. It's I hope you loved you our conversation. So uh, we will meet with you with our next episode. Until then, goodbye.